guys, welcome back to Primetime Studios. Like always, I'm your host, Primetime Phil, and I want to wish you guys a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, all that stuff. I want to wish you the happiest of holidays, and thank you for tuning into my channel. I really honestly appreciate all the support. I want to talk a little bit about the Dallas Cowboys versus the New York Giants before I go into the Dallas Cowboys versus Washington thing again like it was two weeks ago. Now, they're not the same games, and just like this past one, this New York one, they, they gave it to us a little bit because, again, our offense definitely did improve. It wasn't scoring left and right like almost every single Cowboy fan wants them to. But the Dallas Cowboys did show improvement. They did have the time of possession. You just have people like CeeDee Lamb, which obviously I pointed out before. He's having the drops and he has a catch. So he's he's balanced in that sense. Right now he needs to find his rhythm. And it's been that way since he's joined the Dallas Cowboys. So it's nothing new. And, I, and if you haven't seen that before, you've kind of just been blind to it, seeing what the good things that he's been providing. But it's just something that he just needs to improve on. It's not something that it is him. He wasn't like that in college. So when you look at even Dak's point of view in that sense of that Giants game, he did really well. He His stats weren't amazing. He wasn't his 400-yard guy that he was in the previous part of the year, but he was a guy that didn't have a turnover, and he also managed the game. So I've seen a lot of quarterbacks manage a game and win Super Bowls that way. So again, you can't put him, again, as a person that's elite right now, right now, but he was that way earlier in the season. So to say that within a year, the same person has been two ways, yeah, what makes you think that he won't go back the other way? I definitely think he can. So when you look at other parts of this offense, this offensive running game definitely got going again, and it had a lot to do with Connor Williams going back into the left guard position like we were talking about. When you have McGovern back there at fullback, it just made more sense. And yes, I was with that board of that train that, that, that wanted you know, McGovern to go in there and see what he could do. But we saw what he can do. And right now we're getting close to playoff football. So we need to push those like little projects to the side and get ready to kind of put this team together that we're going to be facing other great teams with. Uh, this Dallas Cowboys team is still in that number one hunt. And I honestly didn't give them that a couple of weeks ago because of the way that this offense was playing. Now, when you switch the side of the ball to the defensive side of the ball, the defensive side of the ball had just been flying around. Name me a guy that has not been making a play, it seems like. And the only person you could probably give me is somebody on the bench or, of course, Basham. Basham is that guy that just seems to be around, just hovering, just in the pictures. He's in the background, your pictures, in the holidays, because he's just always around. He's always around the quarterback. He gets that pressure, allows somebody else to make the play. So I don't know if it's just him or... Or, or what, but it just never seems to be him making the play, and it always seems to be everybody around him. So sorry to single him out in this episode, but let's switch it up, man. Let's forget about the New York Giants right now because we're not going to play them again. They're out of the playoffs. They're, they're not even a hope for in, until next season when they get some really good draft picks. But let's switch it over to the side of the ball, and this time we're going to honestly uh, go with the Washington Redskins versus the Dallas Cowboys. Well, oh, that... Sorry, I went backwards. The Washingtonians, the, the Washington football. Yeah, like, you know who I'm talking about. The Washington people are going to be coming this time into Dallas. We don't have to worry about any bench controversy. But there are other things that we are going to have to worry about. And I know there are things on your mind. And so let's talk about some of those things. Let's start with the defense first because the offense is what we're going to talk about more. So let's talk about what this defense has to do to get this victory. So when we look at the defensive side of the ball for the Dallas Cowboys, there's a lot to get excited about. And I know that I say that every week, but aren't you excited about this defense? This defense that's giving pressure? Depending on the Christmas narrative, I think this team, honestly, defense could be considered the Grinch that stole Christmas because they're just taking away from everybody's offense and they're giving it to us a really Robin Hood type approach because they're taking from the rich and they're giving it to our poor offense that can't seem to do anything with it other than eh, field goal here, touchdown after every two or three uh, interceptions. So to watch this defense just get pressure and that front four to five, like, yeah, Parsons is doing his thing. He's just wreaking havoc, getting tackles on top of it. So that's why the defensive player of the year, I got to give it to him more because yes other guys like tj wad miles garrett they're doing their things in the sacks category but yes parson is doing it also in the tackling category as well so he's definitely my running candidate and yeah you could people could say it's a biased thing but it's not you see what he does i see what he does the nfl is seeing what he does now when you look at other people like gregory 
Gregory's doing his thing. He's definitely making a vid for himself to get a better contract at the end of the year. And as long as he can stay healthy, I definitely see that coming. Now, when you look at the other piece, the amazing piece of Demarcus Lawrence, he's doing his thing and he's living up to the money. Why is he living up to the money now? Because he has pieces around him to honestly help him push that that defense, that pressure that we need, and that pressure along that front gets the interception in the secondary, which this secondary has definitely been taken advantage of. And they love those gifts, and we love seeing them receive those gifts. So everybody's happy except for the other team, and definitely makes us happier knowing that. And that's a bad thing to say this time of year, but honestly, I get happy off the other team's misery. So I'll say it out loud, and I have no problem saying that. When it comes to the Dallas Cowboys offense, this offense, I am on the fence on both sides of the fan bases where they're upset and they really want their Dallas Cowboys to be scoring the 30 to 40 because there isn't a whole lot to this offense that has changed other than what mindsets and people just not doing their job. You've shown your potential in the beginning of the season, so why aren't you doing it now? What are the key points? Are you hiding injuries? Are people not blocking right? Are they upset with each other? Is the offense, you know, what is going on? And I think that's a lot of the question. But when I'm on the other side of the fence, I look at the logic. I look at the fact that Dak has really good numbers. And yeah, defense has changed to a zone, which the, the receivers are having problems with. But when you have a receiver that also drops the ball and catches it when he's wide open, I can understand that going on in his mind. And you need to take some shots downfield because that opens it up a little bit. It makes defenses think, hey, I got to defend a little bit back and not instead of just kind of cheating up, cheating up, and then you never give a shot downfield. So I understand the frustration there, but when I also look at the fact that this offensive running game also has gotten going, you know, it, this putting, you know, Connor Williams back in there from the McGovern experiment because you got to push that aside because it's play, near playoff time. I think that's a great experiment, but I, you have to go back to what works. And unfortunately, yes, Connor Williams gives you the flags and penalties, but he also gives you lanes so you can run with your running backs that are honestly both banged up right now and people are so critical of these guys but they're hurt they're playing through their injuries which it seems like a lot of guys in this offense is definitely doing so what has changed what's going on why are the receivers not reading the zones right or why are they dropping passes that they should be catching those are all valid questions from the from those fan bases that are just demanding things you know let's let's do this let's get shit in gear let's show the defense that this you're not gonna have to carry us but guess what right now realistically this defense is carrying us can this offense manage as a game yes they can manage game they've shown you that we can make sure that we don't turn it ball over over every single thing and sometimes Dak does need to be reminded that he can't just go out there and just start slinging it like it's Madden okay so this defense definitely has the ability but can they stay healthy to kind of lead this offense because right now this offense needs a defense that's going to give them you know, four or five extra, you know, drives you know, to get some points. And so, yeah, we need an offense that can manage the game. And right now, that's what this offense is. It's not like they're turning the ball over left and right. You should be excited that this offense at least has gotten shit together in the sense that they're leading the time of possessions and they're keeping the ball out of the other team's hands. This is something that strategy that went back to 2016 when we were 13 and three. So, Again, I get excited about where the direction this offense is goes, but I also am with that fan base that says, you need to get your ass in gear and let's get going and get ready for this playoff. So in the final thought, when I look about the Dallas Cowboys team, it's, it's amazing how I did not talk about Washington really at all because it really honestly, has everything to do internally with the defense and the offense can this defense stay healthy and keep its amazing personnel on there because the game planning you know is going to be really on point with dan quinn at the helm when you look at the offense kellen moore does not have a lot of playoff experience and right now he's showing that he doesn't have a lot when it comes to this bag of tricks so some of his bag of tricks are a little bit boresome you know throwing screens in the red zone it's not going to get it done so can this offense kind of get back on track and do their thing that's going to be the question it's definitely not going to be what the defense does for washington because i think this cowboys team is going to change their approach going into this team just like washington is going to do their thing and change their approach is not going to be the same game so i would definitely tune in and see what's going to happen because again this division is definitely still on the line in the sense of people's hearts and everything but we need to kind of put a stomp on this and kind of show what we can do offensively 
to other teams because God, they're forgetting and I'm forgetting and, and fan bases need to be reminded that this team can do can represent very well going into the playoffs. So like always, I'm Primetime Phil. I appreciate all support. Have a happy, happy holidays. Again, thank you for subscribing. Jingle bells, rock the bells, but don't forget to always ring that bell.